Hi, everyone. I hope you're having a great evening. Uh, my name is Carrie Knight, and I am the owner of Made Brigade in Tampa Bay. And I am lucky enough to own the business with my husband. So the two of us are owner operators in the business. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is um, what I've learned over the last year. I've done a lot of studying um, on marketing, and I've spent a lot of my own time and money getting myself educated on what gets people interested in your service, what gets them to you know, become a customer, and what do you have to do to keep them as a customer. So I've done a lot of education, training, studying. And that's what I want to share with you today. I actually want to help you with, you know, what I've learned that works for my business. And I want to share that with you and hopefully to see that, you know, what I've learned and, and what I can maybe share with you will help you grow as well. So let's go ahead and get started with my presentation. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to grow your business and attract more biweekly customers without having to discount your prices. So that's what we're going to talk about. Let's start with this really famous quote that someone once said, owning and operating a cleaning business is so easy. The employees always come to work. The customers are always so friendly. Cars never break down and everything goes as planned. I'm sure you guys can all relate and agree with this really famous quote that was said by no one ever. <laughs> so, you know, this business, and you'll hear me say this a lot, this is not an easy business to run. Like on the surface, it's really simple, right? Like you hire employees, you, you, you get customers, you send your employees, and that's it. Like on the surface, it, it appears that it's really a simple business. But the reality is, guys, it's incredibly complicated especially when you're talking about having employees. So employees, just by their nature, being human beings, people have problems, right? But they don't have business problems. They have personal problems that affect your business. And so this is never going to stop. Like it, that's something that's never going to go away in your business with having employee problems. And you might have the best employee. Like I have a couple great employees who never miss work, but occasionally, you know, something happens where they have to take care of an emergency and they're gone for a week or whatever. And that's, that's normal. But I mean, you're always going to have a consistent amount of employees who constantly have problems. They're constantly bringing that to work. So you're dealing with a lot of different issues that are, um, you know, that create a lot of havoc in your business. So when you're talking about having employees, it's complicated, it's challenging. So I know you already know that, you know, all of us are at different levels, different stages in our business, but this quote, I just was being silly obviously about it, but the reality is people don't come to work. Customers aren't always friendly. Your cars are going to break down and things don't go as planned. So it's, it's a stressful business. And I, I mean, what, what I'm going to share with you is what I hope will help you navigate some of the daily stress that happens when you're, when you're an owner. So um, this was just a little funny that I wanted to kick off the presentation with. So the problem that I see with most cleaning business owners is that they don't know how to grow their business without offering discounts coupons or worse lowering their prices so i see this all the time in our facebook groups that we're all on where people are saying hey guys what's a great um, discount to get customers to book well i don't know if you've ever thought about this but when people are looking for discounts they're usually discount shoppers and they don't have enough money to afford it so if you're trying to add customers um you know to your if you're, at, you're trying to grow your business through discount customers, what you're gonna find is it's a, lot of, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of stress. Those are people who typically don't have money and so you're gonna deal with money problems on top of discounts. So 
we're going to go through that today about how to grow your business without discounts and coupons. I promise you there is a better way. And that's what I'm going to teach you in this training. So as I mentioned, there's a price to pay for cheap, like cheap prices attract cheap customers. I kind of just mentioned that, but cheap customers are so challenging and difficult to, to deal with. And you're going to spend most of your time on these people. So 80% of your time is going to be spent on issues related to your cheap customers and you're only getting paid like, you know, nominal, the, the margin that you reap from these customers is nominal because they're not paying enough for their service anyway. So we're going to talk about how to avoid that. Cheap prices translates into low value. And I see this a lot too, where people are saying, you know, I'm not valued for, for the work that I do as a cleaner. People treat me really poorly. You know, they look down on me. And that's because you're offering your service for $40 and there's no value that then is, that is like, attached to a low price offer, like a cheap price. People don't have any like value in what you do if you're giving it away for cheap, right? So if it's 20 bucks, 40 bucks, I shouldn't say 20, but 40 bucks, I've seen it. That's, that's not what you want to do. I mean, this is a luxury business. It's a high-end business with people who have money are going to pay for high value. Okay. So we're going to jump into that. Um, cheap prices leads to employee turnover. I know if you guys have employees, you're, you constantly have a revolving door. I have it too. Um, it, it comes and goes, but I mean, the reason mostly employees come, they leave so frequently is because they're not being paid or appreciated enough for the hard work that they do. And the minute that we kind of changed our philosophy internally and started to pay our employees, more money and you know they're they're the ones that are making the revenue for the business so when you take care of your employees they're going to take care of your customers so i see it all the time you guys again referring back to our groups that we're on people are paying minimum wage for this job this is too hard this job is way too hard to pay someone minimum wage so if you're doing that you can expect a revolving door and obviously the number one, you know, the problem with cheap prices is there's no margin. You as a business owner are not getting paid. And again, you work too hard not to get paid for an incredibly stressful job. So don't do it. Don't sacrifice paying yourself a decent wage for what you do for a living. And again, it's a luxury business. We're going to talk more about that. But cheap prices, you guys, they don't pay the bills and they don't put money in your pocket. And how do I know this? I've been there. I have done everything in my business. I think I touched upon, I've done this for 12 years and 10 out of 12, I think I was chasing my tail all 10 out of 12 years of $99 jobs and silly prices that didn't pay the bills. I didn't put money in my pocket and I would constantly be doing this, you know, chasing a customer and trying to get them to book business with me just to get the work, just to get the revenue, which in turn winds up being a one-time cheap customer. And that's not what I want for my business. So trust me, you guys, I've been there and I know, I know what doesn't work. And I'm happy to say now I know what does work. So that's what I want to share with you today. So this is, <laughs> This is actually where my journey began. And this, is, this image is a true depiction of where I started in, in the garbage can, in the trash. And, and that's because I started my business at the beginning of an economic recession, not really knowing that it was going to be an economic recession. Um, but I bought an existing business in December of 2007. The business was doing decent. I don't want to say it was doing gangbusters. It was doing good, but I had a, me personally, I knew I was going to come in, just do all these amazing things and grow the business right away. Well, that didn't happen. Okay. So remember I bought in 2007 In 2008 is really the beginning of the crash. And then 2009 was pretty significant as far as the economy going down. 
2010, same. And then 2011, at least in Florida, we picked back up. So my journey was rather tough. So first thing that happened to me when I bought the business is I lost half of my customers within the first three months. So I purchased about 140 customers. I went down to about 70 within the first three months of owning the business. Now, mind you, I had no idea what I was doing. So to lose half of your customers within three months, uh, <laughs> it's like bailing water out of a, you know, a boat with, with, a, with a hole. It's, you don't know what you're doing. You can't, you can't actually, you can't bail quick enough. So that's what happened to me within the first three months is I was, it, it was awful. I, I mean, I, I hardly remember it because it was so bad. The phone rang repeatedly with cancellations because people were afraid of losing their jobs. And, um, you know, as much as we want to believe this business is recession proof, some of it's not. And that, that has everything to do with the type of customer that you have. So that's the first thing that happened to me. The next fun thing that happened is that my office manager actually was stealing my customers and doing business with her own business. So she had her own cleaning business being run out of her house. So it was pretty slick. What she would do is take a call and then she would dispatch that call to her daughter who happened to be at home. And they would, they would then send a cleaning team, which would be my employees. They would send my employees the next day and she would collect the revenue. So she had a really nice gig going that my, when my phone rang, she was actually taking the business for her own personal business. So I had to fire her, obviously. So then I'm left with, remember guys, lost half of my customers. Now I've, now I've lost my office manager that was running the business and I have no clue. I have no idea what I'm doing whatsoever. So I kept going. And when we bought the business, we obviously um, had some debt and we took out $30,000 in debt for advertising, which is working capital, right? I mean, you can't go into a business not having any working capital. So we went ahead and aggressively attacked print advertising. And this is in 2008. And it was like, I might as well have taken all of that money and flushed it down the toilet. Because what I did with the print advertising was absolutely nothing. There was nothing I had to show for spending all of that money. So now I'm broke. Okay. And the best part is now that I have no money whatsoever, the only thing I could do was to reach for my personal 401k to make payroll and to pay the bills. So you guys, this is where my journey started. I'm actually not even giving you all of the horror side of it. This is just kind of the, uh, um, you know, the, the cliff note version of where everything started for me. But I look at myself as a survivor and, and as, as someone who persevered really hard times. It was, it was so bad that obviously, I mean, it affected my personal life and it affected my marriage. And, and you just, you feel a sense of hopelessness. Um, so I've been there and I know what it feels like not to know what's going to happen. And if you're going to lose all of your family's money, like, like I know that feeling it's, it, it's my lowest low in my life. Um, but I persevered and, um, and I'm here like to tell you about it. So that's, that's pretty exciting. So let's talk about where we are today. So, um, we have about 12 teams. No, we do have 12 teams. We have about 26 employees. So we have teams of two. I have two office staff members and then there's two owners, myself and my husband. We both are owner operators and we're roughly doing about $25,000 in sales per week. Um, the one thing I'm most proud of in my business is that we are hundred percent debt free. So we don't have any car payments. There's no debt on the business. And that's pretty exciting to, again, for me to share that story with you of where we started and where we are today. It's pretty incredible. So, um, our goal for this year is to do 1.2 million and we're definitely on track for that right now. And I put here in green that little changes led to big results. And that's, that's the truth of, you know, where I got to where I am today 
is by sticking it out, you guys, and making little, little changes that led to some pretty amazing results. So what changed in my business? You know, I told you where I started and then I told you where I am today, but what changed? So there's three things that I did that I want to share with you guys that if you're struggling, I, I mean, I really recommend that you do these three things. So the first thing that I did is I hired a business coach and I did group coaching because I couldn't afford one-on-one -on -one coaching. But the thing about hiring a business coach is that they, you know, it's kind of hands-on, like, like it's more interactive. You're going to be forced to look at every aspect of your business and then, um, and then you have to take action. So that, those are like the little changes. When I say li little changes led to big results, it's because I had somebody telling me, you know, he, he, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And the thing about hiring a business coach is that you're hiring somebody who's already done it before. So, you know, the, the quickest path to success is to follow those who have already done it before. So if you want to reach a million dollar business, you guys, then you hire somebody who's already been there. Like who, who do you know that, that has, who has the business that you want? You, you go and you learn from them. That's the quickest way to success. The second thing that I did is I set weekly goals for my business. Um, you know, maybe you do this, but, but maybe you don't, you, you probably, everyone has a goal for the year, but you don't break it down fine enough to know what your weekly goals all are. Um, and this is about re reverse engineering where you want to go. So if you want to get to a million dollar business then you have to reverse engineer what that means. So, you know, by reverse engineering a million dollars, you divide it by 12, that's your monthly target divided by 4.3. That's your weekly goal. And then you have to really focus in on those goals. And what I mean by that is that it needs to be at the top of your mind everywhere. Like you, you should have it on your walls at home. You should have it in your office. You should share it with your staff. You should be talking about it all the time. You should be putting it on your daily planner. You, if you're serious about this business and you're serious about your goals, like I am, I'm pretty passionate about my vision and my goals. I don't stop focusing on them. And that's by putting these little targets in front of me. And when you do that, you guys, guess what's going to happen? If you set a goal for $10,000 and you put that in front of you when you wake up every morning, you're going to see that and, and you're, it's going to manifest and you're going to be able to do it. And that's how I did it. Like I had a goal of 10,000. I was probably at 3000 a week at that time, which is nowhere close to 10,000. But I did little things that made some results that, you know, led to some amazing results and I got there. And then when we reached 10,000, we set the next goal and it was 20 and we did it. So please figure out what your weekly goals are. Don't miss this step in your business. It's really important. And do whatever you can to, to make sure that you're focusing on the targets that you want to hit. And, and I can't preach enough about how important that is. So the last thing that I did is that I changed my mindset. I, I find that this business, this cleaning business, I'm going to say it, is a negative business. I hate to say it. You're just surrounded by negativity, not every day, but it can bring you down. And, and I've been there. Like You feel hopeless. And everything around you is a downer. You know, like the girls don't show up for work. You broke somebody's you broke their shower and you need to pay for that. And they got, someone got in a car accident and you're surrounded by all these negative events that then change your mind. They start warping your mind that this is so horrible and I hate what I do. And, and it compounds, right? Like, so it's like one thing after another of all these ugly things that happen in your business, you have to like close your eyes and focus on the positive and what your goals are and change your mindset. What is your vision for this business? What goals do you have? And, and then from there, you really have to believe that you can do it. And that requires you to make a mindset change. You have to change your mindset. I still go down this path of, of you know, negativity and I'll literally close my eyes at the office and I'll do this thing where I say, release, release, release. And I like let some emotion, like negativity escape. 
And then I go back and, and put my head on right. And I focus on the positivity, the, the great things that have happened with this business. And then I go from there. So these are the three things that helped me with my business. I know they'll help you too. So hopefully you guys wrote these down. Again, just my suggestions, but they, they were very helpful for me with my personal growth. So let's fast forward to 2018. I did stumble on this gentleman here. His name is Russell Brunson. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of Russell. He is the owner of ClickFunnels, which is a particular software product. He's absolutely amazing. Please follow him on social media. Um, he is a marketing wizard. Um, I joined a group with him called the Two Comma Club. It was a marketing mastermind group. And it was so amazing to be surrounded by brilliant marketing minds um, and entrepreneurs who were all focused on their business. And what Two Comma Club means is a million dollar business. So that's what the Two Comma here represents, the Two Comma Club. It represents having a million dollar business. So everyone that was in this group had a million dollar business and they shared some of their strategies um, on how they did it. And a lot of it was digital marketing, which I'm still learning and it's really like way over my head. But just to be surrounded by these brilliant marketers and to learn from Russell Brunson was probably ranks up there as one of the best experiences in my career, hands down. So if you ever get an opportunity to watch his YouTube videos and um, take any of his online trainings, I think he does a onefunnelaway.com challenge. It's a 30-day challenge. It's well worth the money. What you're going to learn there is more than you can learn in a four-year marketing degree. So um, this is my starting point. So in 2018, I really got myself educated on marketing where we are today, where are things going in the future, and Russell Brunson was the educator. So what he taught is something that isn't revolutionary, it's just I wasn't using it in my business. So the one strategy that, that stood out in all of his coaching, and I heard it over and over and over and over, and it didn't register until I probably heard it the 12th time. Well, I wasn't taking advantage of it. So I heard him say it and I would shake my head and nod. And then I would hear him say it again. And I would hear him say it again. And it didn't register until maybe the 12th time that it was like, oh, well, maybe I should be doing this for my business. So this one strategy is what I'm going to talk to you guys about today. And this strategy does not involve lowering prices offering coupons or giving discounts. So I want you guys to like literally scratch all of that out of your head. Like just make all of that go away because that's not what we're gonna talk about when it comes to new business. So this simple strategy has contributed to us gaining 12 plus, um, I think this past month it was actually 20. June was me, I'm, I'm not sure. We are upwards of 20 bi-weekly customers. So that's my focus is bi-weekly. We still grow with some weekly and some monthly, but my focus 100% is to grow the business with bi-weekly customers. So we did it through this simple strategy that I'm gonna teach you. So with all that anticipation, do you wanna know what it is? I sure hope you do. <laughs> all right, you must have an irresistible offer. So I'm sure you're looking at me now saying, okay, that's just, that's not even what I was expecting you to say. That's kind of lame. Um, but hear me out on this. I've done a lot of studying and I've done a lot of research on this irresistible offer. And it's something that's going to set you apart in your business. If you don't have an irresistible offer, all you can do is compete on price. Okay. And like, that's like a shocking, like, oh my gosh, because if you're only going to compete on price, you guys, guess what? You're a commodity business. That's all you are. If you only compete on price and you allow the customer to continuously talk you down and, and talk you out of your prices, then you just became a commodity business. And a commodity business, it's the low price who wins. And there's no strategic advantage to being the second cheapest. So let's just say you're trying to compete with a guy in town. 
who's charging, I don't know what he's charging, let's just say something ridiculous, like $50 a cleaning, and you're trying to compete with that guy, and you're 55, you're $55 a cleaning, I'm just making this up. Think about that. If you're $55 and he's 50, why would anybody do business with you? Because he's the cheapest. So you don't have a strategic advantage in this game of the, the, the game of just price alone unless you are the cheapest. So don't be the cheapest, you guys. Be the most expensive. Focus on quality instead of price. And go after those customers who are going to pay you for you know, the, the quality, the service that you provide over being a low cost, cheap provider. Okay. We're going to talk a lot more about that. But um, again, when you are a commodity business, all you can do is focus on price. And when you do that, all you're going to get is problems. And we talked about what cheap gives you. So you become cheap, then you've got all, a whole slew of problems and uh, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to grow your business. So we're going we're gonna to talk about how you're going to grow your business through an irresistible offer. Now, before you do anything, I want you to understand who your ideal customer is and who it isn't. And I'm sure you guys have already gotten a lot of calls where you know that this person on the other end, the, you know, when you're talking to them, you don't want to do business with them, but you do it anyway. They cause so much stress in your life and in your, you know, in your business. You want to do business with your ideal customer. In fact, I'm going to go one step further and say you want to do business with your dream customer. Who is your dream customer? Because you have them. I have them. And we write them down. Like I write down my dream customer. And when I'm talking to somebody, I focus on, I want them to be like this person. Okay. Like Karen is my dream customer. She never complains. She's got a big house. She pays a lot of money. She's weekly. I never hear from her. And if she needs to skip, she calls and she does it a week prior, not the day of. She's my dream customer. I want more Karens. Okay. So really focus in on who is this person and where does Karen live? What zip code is she in? What is her, you know, where, what's her income bracket? That's who you want to do business with. Don't give in and do business with customers who aren't your dream customer. Now, we talked about the who. So now it's the what. So what does your great dream customer want? Well, the only way for you to be able to know what they want is to listen to their radio station. Okay. Have you guys ever heard of this WIIFM? I put that here with a, like a little fun little radio station or a little radio, W-I-I-F-M. Because if you're not listening to your customer's radio station, guess what? You're not gonna have a good, you're not gonna have a successful business. W-I-I-F-M is what's in it for me. The customer will tell you what they want. You have to listen. You have to stop, stop talking and listen to what they're telling you that they want. And then it's such a simple formula, you guys, when they tell you what they want, that's what you give them. And everybody is a little bit different. And that's why it's so important that you listen to their radio station. And, and I can't go into detail about this right now, but this is the what side of the business and everyone has a different what. Like, I wanna make sure that my, my bathrooms and my floors are taken care of. After that, I don't really care what the dusting looks like in my house. That's not my what, okay? But you have to be willing and able to listen to your customers and then give them what they want. So this is really important. I hope you wrote it down. WIIFM is so critical to your business. Now, I wanna talk about the power of free. Customers, not just customers, all of us, are so drawn to free. That, that is our favorite F word, right? Free is my favorite F word because if I get something for free, like that's, <laughs> that's the best. Like that's just, the, that's just the, the, the cherry on top when you get something for free when you're already gonna buy something from a customer. So let me give you an example. 
I went to Pier One last week and I purchased a bunch of pillows for my sofa in my family room. And when I went to check out, the lady says to me, um, we're running a summer special. And if you buy any one of our outdoor items, you'll get a glass tabletop for free. It was an outside glass table. Well, you guys, I don't need a glass table, but guess what? It was free. It was free. So how could I not buy a $3.49 outdoor pillow, which I don't need, I don't need an outside pillow. I bought it anyway. I didn't buy one outside pillow. I bought two. I bought two out, outdoor pillows that I don't need so that I could get a free item that I don't need. I fell into the marketing trap that I already know about, okay? But it works and it works every single time. Why do you think a company like Pier One does it? Why do you think Verizon gives you a phone free when you, when you take out a line with, you know, a new line with them? The power of free is so, it's so magnetic. It's so, it's so enticing. People can't say no. Okay. So let's use this Hilton example. Um, uh, I just kind of broke down. If you stay at the Doubletree for $149 a night, but you're gonna pay for parking and Wi-Fi and breakfast and the fitness center and maybe even happy hour, the actual total cost is $274. But the Hilton, let's take a look at the Hilton. They're gonna charge me $229 for a room, but I'm gonna get free parking and I'm gonna get free Wi-Fi, I'm gonna get free breakfast, I'm gonna get free access to their fitness center and free happy hour. Like, wow, so all of this, adds up to $354 worth of value, but I'm only going to pay $229. So again, you guys, in this example, I'm gonna pay $229, which is more than Doubletree, but look at Doubletree, I'm gonna spend $274, but over here with the Hilton, I'm gonna get $354 worth of free, not free stuff, sorry, of value over what I'm going to pay. So where would you stay? Like. What makes most sense here, you guys? And have you ever done this? Like, do you look at places that offer free Wi-Fi, free parking, free breakfast? Because I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I'm not going to stay somewhere where there isn't free breakfast because quite frankly, my kids barely eat any breakfast and I don't want to take, I don't want to go to McDonald's and I don't want to sit down and spend, you know, $60 on breakfast. So for me, having that little fruit, and muffin breakfast is worth it to me. So this is just an example of what, how free wins. Like it totally, for me, I'm staying at the Hilton all day. So your offer is what increases the perceived value of your service. Remember in this example, Hilton became more valuable to me because they gave me free parking and free breakfast and free happy hour. They are, their offer increased their value to me. And therefore, when I went with the Hilton, I felt good about my purchase, right? Like I feel good about this because I'm getting all this, fr this stuff for free. And I walk away from this transaction with the Hilton feeling like I've won, like I got one over on them. <laughs> when you know that I didn't, they still went out on the deal. But because I feel like my feelings, I feel like this is a great purchase, then I win and, and I'm getting more value for my buck, okay? So how do you structure an offer in your business? So first of all, you, it has to be relevant. We're a cleaning business. So you have to offer them something that's relevant to our, our service line. So maybe a free carpet cleaning if you have a shampooer. And that's something that people would, they would die over getting a free, like one room free. If you sign up for biweekly cleaning service, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, oh, well, how much would it cost to have my other two rooms done too? And then you just upsold them on carpet cleaning. Okay. Now it needs to have high value. So in our case, we actually offer a free refrigerator cleaning every year to our regular customers, just as a way of saying thank you. It's free to them, but it has incredible high value because nobody wants to clean the inside of their fridge. 
it's gross and it's, you know, just, it's time consuming. So, it, so for me, when I offer to my customers a free refrigerator cleaning, it has so much high value. They love it. The third thing is that your offer has to be easy. Obviously nobody wants to jump through hoops. And the fourth thing is that it should be completely irresistible. It, it, it should be so irresistible that nobody can say no. Okay. So let's jump into some irresistible offers. So the Lexus dealership obviously is a high end and they compete with BMW and infinity and things like that. So this offer is so irresistible. So if you're in the market to buy a luxury vehicle, how can you say no to lifetime oil changes, lifetime powertrain warranty, lifetime loaner cars, lifetime car washes, and their loyalty discount rewards program? It's a lifetime plan. It has $5,000 value. I wasn't really sure about that. I mean, if I was going to do this, I would ask more questions. But the reality is, you guys, this is an irresistible offer. How can you say no? to this particular offer when you're gonna buy a new vehicle, a new luxury vehicle. I think it's an amazing offer. And I, I'm, I promise you that other luxury vehicle, uh, other luxury companies are going to jump in and they're gonna do the same thing. So this is an example of, they call it the billion dollar offer. This is Domino's. So Domino's created this um, delivered in 30 minutes or it's free offer in the like late 80s and nobody was doing that it was revolutionary for the time and they made this the core of their business so if you even think about Domino's today that's what people think of delivered in 30 minutes or it's free and when it just came on the market it blew up they, it blew up their business because people or customers I should say would test this. They would test if, um, if they would really get a free pizza. So they would order just for the sake of seeing if they could get it for free. What an incredible, what, what an incredible marketing like twist. So they got people to buy from them just to test the offer. So that's why it's called the billion dollar offer because it blew up their business 100%. And you guys, the amazing part is is that this offer is the core of their business. It's the core of their business. So that's what you wanna think about when you're trying to structure an offer for your business. Make it the core of your business. When people think about your company, they think about this particular offer because you created this, this amazing offer when you sign up that they're gonna tell their friends and then, they, and then you're known for this particular amazing offer. So it starts with your sales script. And what I mean by that is when people call into your office, they need to hear why you're different. Because what makes you different is what makes you better. And I want you to understand this. In this business, we're not competing on our strengths because people, you can't say over the phone, I'm better than the guy down the street. Well, I don't know what that means. You're better. So you might be better, but you're not competing on your strengths. You're competing on your differences. What makes you different than the guy down the street who's $50? And what makes you different is that you're gonna send employees who have company IDs, and that's what this is right here. So I'm gonna send employees in your home who, are, who have a picture ID. In fact, I'm gonna go one step further, and I'm gonna send you a picture and bio of these two ladies prior to coming to your home. So that makes me different, and therefore that makes me better. We also offer a, a solution called Pure Mist. It's a, actually a treatment that we spray in the home after we're finished with the cleaning. It kills germs and viruses in the home. It was used in hospitals and daycares, and now it's become more, you know, more mainstream in homes. And so we offer this service. It makes us different, you guys. It makes us completely different than anyone else in the market. And the last thing that I can say in my office is we offer an appointment guarantee where your cleaning is free. I didn't say a time guarantee. I said an appointment guarantee. So if you schedule with us for this Friday, I guarantee we're going to be there 100%. I mean, I, I know that we're going to have some call offs, right? And so will you. Um, but I guarantee that the way that I'm staffed and structured, we will be there. We don't miss an appointment. 
So these three things, I just want to put this on here. For me, when you call my office, you're going to hear about all three of these things. Because what makes us different is what makes us better. So remember, guys, your customer is buying the destination, not the plane. And too many times we're focused on selling the plane and not the destination. So we'll tell customers over the phone like, oh, we work in teams of two, we bring our own supplies, we're licensed, bonded, and insured. Who cares? Like it's, it's nice that you're licensed, bonded, and insured, but tell me more about what I'm gonna experience when I'm your customer. Tell me more about how I'm gonna feel when I come home on Friday. Tell me more about how I'm going to feel when I don't have to clean every, all weekend and I can spend time with my family. That's the destination. That's what you want to sell to your customers. Imagine having the weekend free because you no longer, because you've hired us to clean your home. Imagine getting in your bed on Friday night with clean sheets that you didn't have to change. Imagine being able to. Uh, go to your kid's soccer game on Saturday and not have to stress about, um, you know, cleaning the family or cleaning the kitchen because, because we were already there and we took care of it. You guys, that's the destination. Okay. That's, that's the, 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 the blue ocean and the white sand. That's what you sell. That's what you offer. Not the plane ride, not the small plane that's cramped and, 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 and overbooked um, and you get, you know, one Sprite to drink. That's not what you're selling. You wanna sell the destination, okay? And I don't have time to go into all of this, but I really hope you wrote this down. Like your customers are buying the destination, not the plane. So here's the secret to marketing, your, or your offer, I should say. So your offer should have some sort of urgency and scarcity. So urgency means that it expires, okay? So by the end of the day today, or by tomorrow at 5 p.m., this offer is no longer there. Scarcity means it's only available for the first five callers, or we only make this available for the first 10 customers every month. You guys, you have to structure your offer so the customer feels some sort of pain, like, oh, I don't want to miss this. I don't, I don't want to miss it, so I better do it right now. Urgency and scarcity are like, like that's, it goes way back. That's, that's like marketing 101. Um, but you have to use it for your business because it's so effective. It's so effective. And the other thing is, is model what works. Remember when I showed you the Lexus dealership and what they're offering? Yes, Lexus isn't your competition, but look around, pay attention on commercials, TV commercials, see what they're offering. Now you're gonna start paying attention because I pay attention too, but model what works and, and call your competitors, see what they're offering. Everyone has some sort of package deal or offer. Don't reinvent the wheel, just do what works, okay? And the last part of this is that the customer must, must feel like they've won. So no matter what, you, you should make them walk away from the transaction with you feeling like they've won. Like, I'm going to go tell my entire neighborhood because what, what you know, made bright, just making that name up, what they just gave me to sign up is absolutely incredible. And I'm going to go tell, I'm going to tell all my family and friends. I'm going to post it on Facebook. Like, that is so incredible to have someone walk away feeling good and go and share it on Facebook. That, that's huge. Now you guys know on the flip side that happens when we upset them too, but to have that happen for something that, you know, like you made the customer feel amazing because of your offer, you know, that's, that's an incredible victory. That's a, that's a win-win for both of you. So I'm going to share with you guys our offer in my office. So before the offer, we would talk with our customer, we would give them the price and it looked something like this. So, you know, everyone calls for monthly service. We give them our monthly prices and basically they go away. They're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not interested because I don't want to spend $300 on the initial cleaning. And that's what holds most people back is our initial visit. So after the offer, what we do now is we say, 
You know what, um, Mrs. Smith, let me tell you also about our biweekly service because it is less money per cleaning. And let me tell you about our special offer. So if you sign up with us today for regular biweekly service, I'm going to upgrade your first cleaning to a deep cleaning, but you're only gonna pay the regular cleaning price. So instead, I'm gonna go back. So instead of paying $300, Mrs. Smith, you're gonna pay $135. That's an amazing deal, right? Wouldn't you say that? So you're gonna pay the $135, plus I'm gonna give you a free pure mist treatment, which is valued at $50, plus I'm gonna give you a free inside refrigerator cleaning, which is valued at $30, plus I'm gonna give you an inside oven cleaning, which is valued at $30. So all of this adds up to over $310, worth of free stuff. Again, it's free stuff. And it's only available if you schedule biweekly service with me today. So you have to sign up today. I'm telling you guys, this offer works. You don't have to do any of this. Um, I, I like that you, you know, there, in this case, there's four different things that are completely different, but you need to come up with some sort of package that's so irresistible that they can't say no. So other examples of some offers that you can consider for your business is a free toilet brush if you sign up for biweekly service. So leaving them with their own toilet brush instead of using that nasty one that goes from house to house to house, it's kind of gross. But that's something that you can offer and provide as part of signing up for biweekly service. Or maybe you offer free cleaning products when they sign up for biweekly service. Or maybe you give them a free deep cleaning two times a year. Or maybe you provide them with a free report on how to keep your house cleaned in between cleanings. Again, the idea behind your offer, you guys, is being different. So understanding what your customer wants, going back to with them, what's in it for me, what do they want? And then you give it to them as part of the offer. So that's you know, these are just ideas that I threw out there. Again, maybe it just spawned some ideas, but um, these are all things that you can offer that nobody else is offering that make you different. So um, it's hard for you to tell in this chart, but typically um, our conversion rate hovers in, like this is last year, it hovers around 35, 40%. This year, um, we started introducing the offers in October of 2018. We've seen months over 15, 50% conversion rate. So from our standpoint, our offer is definitely working. So if I could go back to the beginning, you guys, and I always like when people share this, like if I could go back to when it all started, where it all started, and for me right here, it started in the dumpster, um, I would say this, figure out who your ideal customer is. Remember, who is it? Who's your dream customer? That's who you wanna find, and that's who you wanna do business with. Then you wanna focus on adding biweekly customers. Don't spend all your time and all, it just, there, there's so much that you guys do to jump through hoops, to get people on your schedule for $99, and they stress you out, they make your life miserable, and they're a one-time customer, or maybe they come back two times a year, that's not your customer. A biweekly customer allows you to create a consistent route for your teams so that you've got the same, same team, same time. You know, it's, it's always, it's creating a route. And for me, that's how I'm looking to grow my business is purely with biweekly customers. And the last thing is, is start making an irresistible offer. Make this the core of your business. So stop offering discounts and instead present new customers with an offer that they can't refuse. So in summary, if you want to make more money, then you need to make more offers. And that's what I am doing some training on. So that's what I want to tell you about. So imagine having an irresistible offer that nearly wipes out your competition and gets your customers to say yes to bi-weekly service every time. So you guys, just imagine having a business that people say yes to bi-weekly service when they call you. That's pretty incredible, wouldn't you say? Does it sound like something that you might be interested in learning more about? If so, 
That's what I'm teaching in my irresistible offer training. So I am teaching you how I did this in my business. I, I mean, I shared with you a lot here in this presentation. I'm going to go a little bit further and um, offer you guys some actual training on how you can create this in your own business. So I'm offering this introductory offer for $37. And, um, you know, I'm not sure how long I'll have this available for $37. But if you go to cleaningbossuniversity.com, you'll see um, this offer. And right now, like I said, it's offered for $37. So I highly encourage you to go ahead and check it out. For the first 20 people who sign up, I'm gonna give you my top five secrets for growing your business. I'm gonna give you my perfect sales script, which includes part of the offer. I'm gonna give you my simple pricing template. I'm also gonna give you my email marketing follow-up. And this offer that I'm giving you for the first 20 people is only available through Monday, August 5th. So like any good marketer, I have some urgency and scarcity built in here. So for the first 20 people, um, you do want to sign up for this by Monday as I'll be uh, taking it down. So, um, so this is my offer for the, um, the training on how to create your, your offer. So what's coming next from me is a full-blown training course. Um, again, it's Cleaning Boss University. It's a university program. I'm going to be teaching you everything from you know, how to deal with employees, how to hire employees. Um, how to do scheduling, uh, a lot of marketing because that's my specialty, but it's a full-blown course on how to grow your business. And I'll go one step further. I mean, for those of you who want to grow a million dollar business, it's definitely possible as long as you're in a good market, a, a really, um, I would just say a, a demographically a market that can support a million dollar business. So, um, I'm looking to grow my tribe with some awesome cleaning bosses, and I encourage you to follow me on social media. Um, I am on Instagram. It's kind of quirky what you, how you have to look up my, my handle, but it's underscore Carrie underscore night, and then you'll find me there as the cleaning boss. And then the same thing on Facebook, I have a page called Carrie Knight, and it's um, under the cleaning boss. So um, that's it for me, you guys. And this was so much fun. Like I really enjoyed this and I hope you got a lot out of it. I am honored and humbled to be part of this. I'm so much looking forward to actually starting my own speaking career. I wanna do a lot of things. I'm, I'm really a dreamer and um, like I never sit still. So there's a lot of things that I wanna do and get going. Um, but first is I wanna get my university going. I definitely plan on adding a podcast and then just coaching and helping people grow their business. So obviously marketing is something I'm passionate about. If you have any questions, please um, send me a message. Um, Instagram is probably where I, would, I hang out the most when it comes to messaging. So please send me a message on Instagram. I will definitely um, respond to you. And if you have any questions, anything that I can help you on, uh, feel free to send me an email, thecleaningboss at gmail.com as well. So thank you, Maid Summit, for having me. And um, you guys have put in a ton of work and it definitely shows. And I just wanna say thank you so much. And it was an honor to be part of this. Thank you. Have a great night.